Okay, so here's another section of some of the porn projects that I have started. Um, this is one of my boxes full of my little strips that I have not put together into a ball yet. Um, this is the bottom of my, what I'm calling my brown bag project. Um, brown bottom bag product project. Um, you will be able to find this um, uh, on Etsy. I'll be selling the pattern. I'm going. I'm in the process of creating it right now. Um, I will also have these bags for sale on my Etsy channel as well. You can look for Young Forty Mom or Crafty Young Mom. Um, I've got quite a few of them started as I'm doing the project. Here are some more down here. Um, also, some of my other bags that I'm, I'm trying to create. This is my uh, living room. I'm, I'm sitting on the couch trying to get some of these completed, and my daughter's giggling at me in the background because she thinks it's really <laughs> funny that mommy's making a video. Um, down here, oh, there's the cat. See, there's Ellie Belly. Hello. She likes to crawl in the box and sleep in the bags. I'll have to show you a picture of that later. But these are some of the porn balls that I've made um, using the, um, the white and red. And as I'm stringing them, if I notice that it's a, one of the strips from the white and red bags are solid white, I'll go ahead and separate those out and make a solid white ball because uh, you don't get... Sure, honey. Um, anyway, sorry about that. You can get, um, um, there's not that many places that give you solid white bags, so therefore I went ahead and separated those out in case I needed to put, make just some, some white parts of my bag. So anyway, that's a little inside as well, and we will get to the rest of it later. All right, Young 40 Mom here. Let's go ahead and get started on my process of doing the porn bags. First, you want to take your bags and you want to find the seams and the creases and just pull it this way then pull this in and what I do is I straighten it here and flatten it out I do this with several of the bags I've already got a lot of them processed and ready to go so normally I would separate them by colors or by stores if you would and again you're just gonna take them straighten it there flatten it out I'm going to do two more, and then we'll go on to the next step, okay? Flatten it out, go to the next one, okay, and this is all I'm going to show. You get the idea, okay. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take it, and I'm going to fold it in half. Now this is not how everybody does it, but this is how I do it. It makes it easier and goes by quicker. Fold it in half again, flip it, and fold it down. You're going to cut the very end of it off where the crease is, push that aside. And the reason why I flip it back this way is because it kind of shows you where the handles are. You're going to cut it, and that's going to be discarded and go to your recycle bin. Set that aside. Go on to the next one. Flip, flip, flatten, flip back forward, cut off the end. Cut off the other end, discard, and move on. Now, I will take and flatten out about 20 to 25 bags at a time to do this process. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video real quick so you can get an idea. Now by separating out the colors, that gives you your stripe when you start to crochet. You can make several different colored balls of the yarn, aka plastic yarn. Alright, so I have several boxes of these already prepared. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to keep them folded like that and then you're going to cut them in about one inch strips. And what I like to do is go ahead and wad it up a little bit more. So all I have to do is go through and cut my strips. Now, if they have any color in them whatsoever, I'm going to loop them. If they have no color at all, um, like this one has no color at all, I'm going to set it aside so I can make a solid white ball. The rest of them have color. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it like this 
and then I'm going to take another one. I usually use tacky finger on my fingers to make it a lot easier to loop them. I'll go ahead and put my finger here. It makes it easier. I'm going to push this with my thumb, hold my finger here, and pull it through. It makes a really good tight knot, and you're not going to see that. So you push that to the side. You're going to get your next one. You have it here. Actually, I've got it backwards. You want your bigger loop on. You want your bigger strand on your right side, or at least I do. Then I'm going to push it through and pull it, and you're done. And we'll be back in a minute. All right, stitchers. I'm going to take off my cuff. This is the Dragon Scale cuff um, in UT colors and with kitty cat hair everywhere. Anyway, it's a, getting a little annoying on my hands, so I'm going to take it off. My daughter is going to be opening these up for me. So what I do is I'll take a bunch of these and loop them on my arm. These are going to be used for my brown bottom bag. That's what I'm calling it. I'm doing a pattern and I'm doing a bunch of, bunch of bag, making up a bunch of bags. Um, they can be used for the beach, grocery bags. They can be used for a gift. Um, it can anything, a picnic lunch. You can wash them and air dry them because they are 100% plastic. I do accent them usually with ribbons. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, I put a whole bunch on my arm like this. And this is the process that I do. Okay, baby, you can stop. That's good. Okay, so what I do is, again, you're going to take this. You're going to make a loop on the end. That's enough. Thank you. You're going to take the next one. Again, I'm pushing it through. I'm holding my finger out like this. And then I'm going to tie the knot. Push it to the side. Straighten it. Find my loop. Push it through. Pull my finger. And loop it with my thumb. So it makes a really straight, clean knot. Again, I'm just going to go through it real quick. I'm going to do it slower so that you can see what I'm talking about. But anyway, this is straight. I've got a loop. I hold the loop. I'm going to take it and push it with my thumb. Hold this with my thumb and my forefinger. Pulling it through. Tighten a notch. It seems like a lot of work, and actually it, it kind of is. But if I'm sitting on the couch, I'll have a whole bag of these made up, ready to go. Just tighten it, go through, tighten it, go through, tighten it, go through. Now, this is a bag that I have full of these, and I'm going to do that with these with the brown bags. After I make a whole bunch, I'm going to just wind it like I would a yarn ball. Pull it off, just wind it up. I hope you can see this. Okay, so I wind it up, and that's the beginning of my ball. Um, in the next clip, I'm going to show you how I connect my balls. All right, next I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a what a demonstration of what I do to make my strips. My daughter's going to be helping me. I don't know if she you can see her or not, but. Um, I've got this hooked up to the tripod and I broke one of the legs, so hopefully it'll be alright. Anyway, so what I do is I take the strips and I split them up, and I usually use tacky finger or a wet sponge because sometimes your fingers, it's hard to open these after a while, and you don't want to lick them. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I put them on my wrist. I put several on my wrist. I'm usually sitting on the couch when I do this. And I have them beside me. She's handing them to me. I need more babies. We'll do we'll do about ten or fifteen of these. Okay. So anyway, so I've got this and I, I usually am sitting on the couch like I said and I've got this beside me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one strip like this, um, straighten it out, make a loop, 
take another piece and I push it through with my thumb and hold the other end with my forefinger to keep it straight so it won't tangle because sometimes it'll get tangled and knotted and it's a, it, you, it's just a waste of time if you, if you don't keep it straight. I go through and I make the knot. It's a very tiny knot. You will not see it when you stitch. I can't, then I straighten it out. I have a loop. I put my finger through. I take my next strand off my arm, push it through with my thumb, keep my thumb in place, hold my forefinger. It runs very smooth. I'll show you, I'll be doing this here quickly in a moment, show you how smooth this actually goes this way. And it goes very quickly. Again, a small knot, you don't have to worry about. Straighten it, make your loop, put your th finger through, poke your next loop with your thumb, keep your thumb there, hold your forefinger out, straighten it out, release it, and tighten. I'll do one more and then I'm going to do the rest pretty quickly. Again, straighten it out. You've got your loop. Take your next strand off your arm. Push it through with your thumb. Leave your thumb in place. Hold your forefinger out to keep it straightened. Pull your loop. Let go of your th forefinger. Let go of your thumb. Tight. And I can sit on the couch with a bag of these and do this really quick all day long until I have a good amount of strands. Do one color at a time. But this is how I make my plarn, which is plastic yarn from grocery bags, shopping bags, anything like that. Now, if you'll notice, this right here did not come out straight. That's okay. When you start stitching it, what you're going to do is you're going to have this in your hand and you're going to thread it on your, you're going to do it like you normally would when you crochet. I crochet with my fingers like this. It's going to keep it straight. As you're crocheting, this is going to go into the next round, or rather the next strip. So it's not going to make a difference. You want to try to keep them as straight as you can, but if you do not and you make an accident like this, like I just did, it's okay. It's forgiving because the plastic is so thin, it will crochet into it. And if you do have that little nub, you can just take your hook and pull it through one of the stitches and it hides really well. You can't even see it and it won't come undone. Uh, but anyway, so that's what I do with those. Then I start, after I do a whole bunch of them, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll them up into a ball. You do just like you would if you were winding yarn. Roll them up into a ball. Like I said, I usually do a lot more than this, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to do a few of them. Okay, now that you've got them into a ball, I'm going to show you how to connect your balls. You don't, I, like I said, I usually make bigger balls than that. I make them about this big. Um, here's another small one that I did a while ago for, demo, for um, when I was doing a video clip and had the camera off. Uh, okay, so you're going to take loop on one end and again you're going to do it just like you did the other. You're going to keep it with the loop on the end straight. This is going to go up through here and this is going to be the other end just like you were doing the strip. You're going to pretend like this is your strip. You're going to pass it through and you're going to put your thumb and your forefinger, tighten it now you're going to wind this ball onto here to make a bigger ball. And that's how you continue. And also as you're doing this, your plastic is going to compact to make it more like a thread, like a yarn. And that's how I combine two of my balls.